old bookshelf up yesterday it was for free on um, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, nobody wanted it for a couple of days. It's really wobbly. I don't know if you can see that. It's really wobbly. It's old. The paint looks pretty bad. The bottom is pretty messed up. It's really wobbly because it's old, but also because it was just made with nails. There's one nail there, one nail there. Um, the color, the condition, it's not looking real great, but um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it apart, we're gonna plane it off with our planer, and then we're gonna try to put it back together with screws and glue and then stain it all and see how it looks after that. So we took the the uh, bookshelf apart. It took us probably five or 10 minutes. Now we're just, maybe five. Now we're just pulling out these old nails. And a lot of these nails, I don't know if it was because this thing was kept in a garage or what, but the nails have actually rusted in half. But, um, so I suspect this thing is probably 30 or 40 years old, at least, probably older than that. Um, maybe I can confirm with the previous owner how old she thinks this thing was or when it was made. But anyway, uh, so now we're just tapping the nails out backwards and pulling them out on the other side with the hammer and with a pair of pliers. So we'll do this and then we're going to proceed to planing down the old wood. So we have some nails stuck in here and one of the ways that I'm getting them out is I'm using my pliers. I'm grabbing it like this. I don't know if you can see that. I'm getting a grip on it and I'm pushing it away. By pushing it away from me like that, I'm able to roll it up. And that's probably a three inch uh, finishing nail. So that's one of the ways we're getting the nails out. What has happened, and what often happens when you're taking stuff apart, is that sometimes you'll break a nail. These nails were actually rusted. Uh, they were basically rusted in half. So I took a nail set, put it down in there, drove it down, and so I can pull it up the other side. Here's one that's rusted off here. There, there, there and there. These two I've already countersunk in so I can get them out the other side. So what we're going to do is drive those in so they won't mess up my planer blade. So a couple hours of sanding later the boards look a lot better than they did. All the paint is not totally off but it looks a ton better than it did. Uh, and I've used one, two, three, four, five, six different sanding bits for my Bosch uh, random orbital planer, or uh, sander. And it works really well. Um, and so I think what I'm going to have to do is these ends down here uh, were in pretty rough shape. So I may have to cut probably a half inch off the top and off the bottom and here's the other side it's not looking too good either uh, some of that wood was almost looks like it's dry rotted so I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, these are the undersides of the shelves the ones with the white still on them I'm gonna get the rest of the paint off but the top sides Top sides are looking pretty good. Not bad at all. So I'm I'm more than happy with that. It's a beautiful grain on the wood. Um, so they're looking pretty nice. So that's the progress for uh, today. I would took maybe two hours sanding on this to help uh, smooth out all the rough marks from the planing and to get off some more of the paint. Okay, so here is what remains of the bookshelf. 
right now. Um, I think I am going to take my miter saw here and cut off this nailed area just as close to the bottom as I can on both the top and the bottom. And that way I'll have a better nailing surface. Then I'm gonna mark out the area for the shelves. This shelf right here I probably won't, probably won't end up using. It's so warped, um, but we'll see. We'll see as I go along what I end up doing. But in the end, I'm gonna to try to make it look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out now. Okay, now I'm just going through. I've cut off these ends that I didn't want. Now I'm going through and marking the place where I'm going to put my shelves. Here is where the original shelves were. And then this one's going to match up. But I'm going through and I'm going to put a shelf every 12 inches. Um, and then of course I'm going to have a top and a bottom on it. But I'm going to go through every 12 inches and mark it out, making sure this is level on that side. I've already measured down 12 inches from every mark, and then I'll make sure that line's level and connect through my arrows. So making an arrow at the 12 inch mark and making sure that my line connects through my measurements so that, and I'm measuring and marking both boards at the same time, so it'll be level across. And it's a little bit faster that way. Okay, instead of going back with the original, um, the tiny uh, pieces of wood that they had to prop up the drawers or to prop up the um, shelves. I decided to go back with um, two by twos. And I think a lot of it is gonna get hidden behind the trim pieces. So I think the trim pieces are gonna go on here and you'll probably be able to see them still. Um, but what I thought about doing is cutting a 45. This is the back. So these are lined up flush to the back. And I'm lining them up underneath the line. You can see the line is here. I'm lining them up underneath the line so that I'll have, uh, not on the top, but on the other ones, I'll have about, you know, um, 12 inches or a little bit less, 11 and something, the thickness of the board in between. And that's, that works for most of the books that I'm gonna put on this. Uh, so what I did was I pre-drilled my holes in these two by twos and I started to counter to drill it for a countersink and I'm going to put screws in. I'm going to glue it and I'm going to screw them down. But what I'm thinking about doing is cutting a 45 onto the front of these so that in looking at it, you won't, it won't be as readily apparent that I have these huge blocks in here and I'm going to put a smaller, smaller books on both of the ends, but that'll make the shelf so much stronger because the bookshelves that are like the ones that you get from Walmart or whatever that are all particle board and that's most of the stuff that you see that people have nowadays those particle board bookshelves do not hold very much weight um ours are all all bowed and we have a lot of books so uh originally this was going to go into the garage but my wife likes it so much that it's going to go into the house and so I'm gonna uh, beef it up a little bit by putting uh, two by twos. And again, this was a scrap piece of two by two that I picked up somewhere and it was free to me. Uh, so I'm still spending zero dollars onto this other than the price of a few uh, sanding pads and whatever, the little bit of glue that I have to use. And I think even the screws that I'm gonna be able to use are gonna be um, uh, free or pretty close to free. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, because I've re I've reused them from other projects and things like that. And if I do have to buy new screws, that's just, that's very little money. So I'll have maybe a couple, couple dollars. The stain I already had from other projects, uh, things like that. So I'm just kind of reusing stuff that I had already bought for other projects. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm thinking about maybe beveling the front of each of these. It's, it's extra work, but it, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, and it might look better, but it's definitely going to be a lot stronger than the original was. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're gluing these on. We've 
countersunk these screws. So we drilled a hole that was big enough to take the uh, top of the screw down a little way so that it could be countersunk inside the wood and reach down in that. And now what we're doing is we're gonna glue the back of them and screw them down where the top is just touching this line. So they're all gonna be level. Okay, so I uh, screwed this and glued this in yesterday. So it's had, it's had a little while, maybe, maybe 20 something hours, 24 hours maybe to uh, let the glue set up. And so today I'm just gonna try to put the rest of the thing together. So I'm gonna put the, um, the top and the bottom on this thing and put it together, do some final sanding. And uh, I think I'm gonna sand down these first before I put it together, use my random orbital sander and sand those up to their, to their nice and then start putting it together. Well, I've been getting it stained. It's starting to look pretty good. Um, my wife likes this red mahogany stain, so I use that on it. It's looking pretty good. It's made by Minwax. It's red mahogany. And I've just been putting it on with, uh, wiping it on with paper towels. Uh, and then wiping it off. This is the white showing through from that original knot hole, but I'm okay with that. I mean, for what it is, it looks, it looks really nice. Uh, remember I had split some of this wood, taking it apart, so I went out there and found the, the pieces that I had saved, and now I'm trying to glue those back in and get the seam pretty good. Now this is my facing, and I did the other one the same way. It, it had split off, so I'm gluing it back on. They're not the same thickness anymore because I have planed this down. That's okay, I'm gonna take my sander and I'm gonna sand off that paint and make everything nice and smooth and make it look like it's one piece again once this uh, once this glue dries. Okay, so the glue set up. I'm gluing back on the pieces that split off. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but there is a difference in thickness right here on both sides, because this is the piece that originally split off in the beginning. I was able to glue it back in. That line you can see is not the glue line, it's the thickness line. So what I'm gonna do is sand these down. And the other one is about the same. I've had it in the vise, but it's about the same. Same sort of deal. So there's glued on, there's the thickness difference. But in, on the whole, it looks pretty decent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sand this, sand these down to where, where they look pretty decent. I'm not trying to crush that thing or anything. I'm just trying to get it to hold it where I can sand it down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna get, just use my random orbital sander to do that. I think, I think it's still visible there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my random orbital sander in and do both of those. Um, I'm gonna be wearing my respirator. We're working with paint and we're working with all this uh, sawdust. It's good to have your, your respirator on. And when putting this on, just make sure the holes line up. This is a Bosch random orbital sander. It was a great purchase. Uh, I would recommend this, this to anybody, this product.
Okay, that's probably less than a minute with a random orbital sounder. But I don't know if you can tell. That's totally flush. Now there's some streaking and stuff, but that grain matches up. It's a bit of a wavy grain, but that grain matches up just right. And that piece is flat. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking just to get it down real quick with a sander. And so now I'm going to do the other side. So here's a comparison of the other side. See that standing up, you see the difference. You know, a little over a fingernail's thickness between that on this side. There's some streaking from that where it was rusted, but it's, it's, it's flat. So now I'm going to work down this side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other, on the other piece. Just run in my random orbital sander across it to get it down. just a couple of seconds and for me that's that looks great you can see that little line ever so slightly see that line there but the grain matches up it's pretty took off the paint on that edge here's the other side it looks nice. I mean, that crack runs all the way up there. But looking down on it, I can't tell too bad. And this crack runs all the way up here. And you can see it across there where the discoloring is. But I'm totally, I'm totally okay with that. That looks great. Just going to sand up this edge here. There's a place where you could get a few splinters there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. And we're gonna do the other piece of wood. And I'm using my XY vise that's attached to my drill. I could use a bench vise. I'm using that.
is what it looks like repaired. Looks beautiful, it's flush. No splinters, it's tight. You can see a line there, but this is gonna be on the case. And if people are looking for the line there, they might see it, but I'm not worried about it. I think it looks great. You can see where here from the old nail being in it, it started to split a little bit. But again, this is free cycled, upcycled. It was gonna go probably to the trash. So I'm okay with it. It looks good to me. And I think once we've got the stain on it, you're not even gonna be able to tell. I mean, if you've got a microscope looking for it, you'll see it, but otherwise I don't think you're, I don't think the person's gonna be looking for it. So I've just been told this is going in my daughter's room. She needs a, a bookcase, bookshelf. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up and put it in her room. So same deal here. Uh, it's sticking up quite a bit, smaller piece of wood. I'm just gonna sand it down real quick. I'm using 220 grit on my Bosch random orbital sander. I'm just looking at one spot. I'm not sanding the whole piece yet. Just trying to take it down. And now I'm gonna do the whole piece. All places are invisible. I'm going to do the five. I'm going to do the I'm going to come back around my head. I'm rather happy with that glue joint because because if you look down here, it's broken all the way down here. It's broken all the way down to here, but you can't see anything really. There's a little bit of remnant of glue right there. But I put it all back on. It's smooth. It looks nice. I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with the way it looks. Uh, and now, just in contrast to the other side, bang, and you can see how much raised relief that is. And so when I'm coming in with my sander, what I'm doing is I'm putting, angling the sander to where it takes this down till it's nearly flush, and then I'm sanding the whole surface to get it smooth. And I'm, again, I'm using 220 grit uh, sandpaper. I'm sorry, 120 grit sandpaper. It's a little bit coarser.
was ever broken. Um, so here's this side. It was broken from down here all the way up through somewhere, I think around there. But looking at it, you can't tell really. There's a faint line that I can see on camera. I can't see it with my naked eye. But that's, um, that looks a lot better. The other side, I think it was, it was this side that was broken, but it's basically invisible. You can't really see that. The other edge, I think that's where it came out, but you can't even, you can't feel anything. And it looks just totally gone to the naked eye. So that's, that's the two sides. So this piece is blown out, it's gone. What I'm gonna do is cut that. I'll be cutting that off so you won't be able to see those at all. And then we're gonna be reinstalling it onto the bookshelf. So this is the face of the bookshelf. I'm gonna be cutting those off. And the same thing on the other end uh big pieces were broken off of this that i don't have i don't have those pieces so what i did was smoothed up the areas where it had splintered out rather than putting another piece on i'm not going to do that i'm going to cut most of my excess length off this side and then just put this down at the bottom of the case this side facing out and i think that'll be fine uh, again it's going on my daughter's room and i think it's going to look good when it's all said and done but i've got to cut off i cut off some extra height on the bookshelf because of the areas that were all uh, messed up from the old nails cut those off this is what the bookshelf is looking like right now so my wife likes this dark stain so i put that on there it was originally white I'm going to put these facings on, which are those pieces, stain those up, and secure in the, the shelves. They're not in there yet. Then I'm going to figure out the backing. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now.